I want to share with you a little hack I threw together that allows me to charge my electric car using excess solar energy generated by the panels on the roof of my house. Yeah, I know, a My Energy Zappy can do exactly that, but what if you made a massive mistake when you purchased your car and took up the offer of a really cheap pod point instead and are now living to regret that decision? I had solar panels fitted back in December last year but I'm still waiting for a battery to be installed and seeing all of this electrical juice flying out of my house for free is upsetting me. I've got a pretty decent home automation system up and running so I decided to see if I could rig something up within that to help make better use of that excess energy. And it turns out I didn't need to purchase anything else at all in order to get this working. But if you want to have a go at creating this solution you will need an EV emergency charger with adjustable charging speeds, a smart plug, a home energy monitor and home assistant. Let's start with that emergency charge cable also known as a granny cable. I've no idea why it's called that but it's essentially just an EV charging cable with a type 2 socket on one end and a 3 pin plug on the other that you just plug into a normal standard UK socket. Uh, the idea is you should carry this with you um, in your car when you go on a journey so as you can charge from a normal socket in the event that you don't have access to a 7 kilowatt or better charger. You are limited by the 13 amps of the socket you are plugging into which means you can only charge at about 3 kilowatt maximum. Uh, my specific granny cable has a power selection option meaning I can further limit charging down to 8 amps which is up to 1900 ish watts. In the real world I've tested this at drawing about 1850 watts. I've only got a small solar array um, 3.9 kilowatts so that ability to limit the charging speed is extremely useful in this scenario. The second component I needed was a smart plug. I used an IKEA trad free one which is a, a Zigbee one that I had lying around. You could find it easier to use a Wi-Fi smart plug if you don't have an existing Zigbee network. Whichever one you do use make sure it supports the current you're planning to pull through it. IKEA's plugs support up to 13 amps so my 8 amp charger is well within that limit. Third component is some sort of device to measure your live import and export power. You could use some sort of CT clamp solution for this uh, just so long as it can feed its data into Home Assistant. I'm using the Hildebrandt Glow in-home device um, or in-home display that connects directly to my smart meter. Uh, Hildebrandt then provide an API and an MQTT feed which can push that data into Home Assistant. I could do an entire video on that excellent little gadget but not right now. And lastly, you need Home Assistant. Um, in Home Assistant, I created a helper an input boolean called Solar Charge EV which I'll use to enable or disable this feature like, a, like an on off switch. Then I created some automations. The first one waits until it detects a continuous export of 1.8 kilowatts for over 30 seconds and if the Solar Charge EV helper is turned on it'll turn on the smart switch. The second automation waits until it detects a continuous import of over 150 watts for at least 60 seconds and then it will turn the smart switch off. Uh, the reason for those delays is because I don't want it bouncing on and off, on and off as clouds come and go, um, knocking out the, uh, the generation um, power from the solar panels. So I, I thought of created that wait for a few seconds while it's importing still, just in case a cloud goes over, it won't suddenly start cutting in and out. Finally, I created an automation that triggers when you toggle the solar charge EV helper on or off. The idea here is that if, when you turn on the helper, uh, there's enough power to charge the car being exported, it'll turn on the smart switch straight away. When you toggle the helper off, it'll turn the smart switch off. You'll see in my automation that I also stop and start a timer. This is just a way of automatically time limiting how long this charging function runs for. You don't need to complicate things with that if you don't want to. And what does this look like in operation? Well, it works really well. Check this out. Here you can see the solar panels are generating about three kilowatts and I'm exporting two and a half kilowatts. If I turn on the solar charge EV helper, the granny cable turns on straight away. And within a few seconds, we should start to see the home power 
usage rise as the um, export level drops because the car is charging. There we go, we saw that drop. Now I'm going to turn on a heater which will simulate a cloud going overhead and the solar uh, production dropping a little bit. Here goes the heater and we should see there we go we're suddenly starting to import and after about five seconds there we go granny cables turned off because the cloud's gone over we don't want to import too much energy we only want to use the solar power and turn off the heater and that should there we go there's some export and five seconds later that granny cable turns on there we go i've tweaked the timers to speed things up a little bit um but you should get the general idea you can obviously tweak the amount of time it takes for the plug to turn on and off when import or export is detected and it will never be as efficient as a real My Energy Zappy because you miss out on all the energy when your export is too little for this automation to kick in or the excess is over and above what your 8 amp charger can use. But in my case at least that energy was just leaving for free and I'd much rather try and make use of it myself if I can. Anyway, I hope you found this useful, maybe even useful enough to give this a go yourself. I'll put all of the automation details up on my website and put a link to it in the description in case you want to see them in detail. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.